show you these kitchen cabinets while I still have a little bit of light coming in here. Um, hopefully that you can see them. Um, they turned out really well. Um, I like this lighter color down on the bottom because it kind of brightens um, the kitchen up some. And these countertops, I really like them. It gives me a lot of space right here. And you know, there was another concern that people had about a tow board. Well, I considered that when building the cabinets, you know. A lot of times you'll have a cabinet that is raised up and there will be an indention in the bottom. That way you don't um, run your foot up against it when you pull up to the counter. Um, but I also knew that my live edge, you know, in some spots right here, check this out. I have got this much right here before I actually touch. So when I pull up to the counter, you can see that my I'm touching right here, but see where my toes are at? I've got a good three or four inches down there on the bottom still, and I'm touching the countertop right here. So it doesn't matter where I go, I've still got the live edge comes down a little bit right here. I've still got two and a half inches right here. Um, if I pull over here, still the same thing, okay? So when I was considering building these, I thought, well, with such a, an overhang on the live edge, I don't actually need that tow board. Now, this is still minus doors and it's minus some trim. So when I put the trim on, it's gonna come out another three quarters of an inch. But I've still got plenty of room right here. And um, even when I put the trim on there, and I'm still not gonna be touching it anywhere that I go along the cabinet. So I didn't really see a reason for the tow board. So I do have uh, the door still to put on. I've got trim that's gonna go around here. Um, it's gonna look really good when I'm done with it. Haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with the top yet. Um, my son suggested just go ahead and secure these down. Um, put the uh, timber screws in them, in other words. That's what I've got that I'm gonna fasten them down with. Put a nice bead of caulking on the back because these are not gonna come off. All right, I'm not going to move these. So put a good bead of caulk on the back, seal up any other cracks that may be here. And he was saying to get a piece of uh, something and put along the edge right here and seal up that corner. And then I would be able to pour inside of that, kind of like a little form, I'd be able to pour that. And then once it's set up, I could pull it back off. So I may do some sort of an epoxy um, acrylic type thing on top of this is going to have to be clear so I would have to use clear caulking um, that way you know if you see through it you don't actually see a different color or anything but I may end up doing that but I've also got these deer antlers right here that are going to be the handles for my doors um, I'm missing one antler so I'm on the lookout I've got one antler for this door I got a pair for this I've got a pair for this right here. Of course, some of these have to be trimmed down a little bit in order to make them match. But um, yeah, I'm looking for one for this one right here. But I think it's really going to look cool when I get um, all of this put together. Um, and you're the first to see all of this uh, deer antlers and everything now. Um, and the explanation behind a lot of the reason that I did it this way. Um, but, you know, I mean, if, if somebody is bound to determine they want a tow board, then they just basically lift up the cabinets and then put uh, something in underneath down there. But like I said, I didn't see with such a big overhang on my countertop why I should even do that. It's just a bunch of extra work and wasted space, honestly, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, anyway, um, yeah, that is uh, the kitchen cabinets. I also, I considered putting in a Lazy Susan over here, but it would have been a whole lot of extra work. And um, these cabinets, you know, I can reach in here and I can reach in here. You also notice that I offset um, these uh, shelves right in here. I cut them back six inches and I cut that out because I can stand right here and see everything on the bottom shelf. Now, if this was brought up here, I would have to get way down there. But um, I did that to make it easy. And 
So I'm really happy with them, uh, the way that they turned out. I've still got to put a piece of trim back here. I'm going to have to have somebody help me hold it because it has to be a full length piece. I don't want any splices in it. But I think it turned out really good and um, I think it makes the kitchen look uh, really nice. I still have to put uh, my gas range. It's going to go right here. That's the reason that I stopped this cabinet because we had changed our mind. We had considered um, actually bringing these out all the way over to here and then putting in a gas range top but then we found um, a gas range with a, the oven for about the same price now these don't have any electronics on them at all this this appliance doesn't it's just plain simple you know it's got the buttons I didn't want anything with electronics in it um, and uh, of course now the burner is electronic so it will have to have power for that but I'm trying to keep my power consumption my needs down as, as much as possible and honestly you know we didn't have those back in the day right so you don't need all that electronics as far as I'm concerned on the stove today um, you know when granny cooked something she looked at the clock to see how long she needed to have in order to bake it she may even set herself a little timer when it would go off then she would go get things out of the oven so that's what I plan on doing the other thing that I plan on doing is I don't even think I'm going to get a dryer because there's a lot of an expense for me to get a propane dryer because um, I'm trying like I said I'm trying to keep my consumption down here and the gas appliances do cost a little bit more of course I don't mind spending that um, because it does keep like I said, my um, total need for power down, um, even though I'm swapping that off for gas. The gas, like the, the stove, gas cooks quicker, gas heats quicker. Um, so I decided, you know, that that's what I wanted to do. But the dryer, I think I'm just going to make a clothesline uh, up there on the hill. I mean, how many dirty pants and shirts can I accumulate in a week's time? Uh, not that many. So, you know, three or four sets maybe. Um, so what I'm going to do is just, uh, like I said, just wash them, hang them out, uh, bring them in, fold them. I mean, you're talking about a total of 10 minutes and um, be done with it. So, and that will save, you know, quite a bit of money as far as a dryer is concerned. But yeah, I think that, um, I think things are looking up in here. The cabin is starting to feel really homey. Um, it's coming together and this has been great even though I didn't have a sink here you know I've got a bowl that I can put up here and wash my dishes and stuff like that I'm I'm actually using the um, uh, that antique uh, I don't know what you call it that stand you know with the wash basin and the mirror I use that to to shave and uh, you know kind of clean up a little bit and then of course you know I'll run over to my sisters uh, in the evening and take a shower um, but in the morning when I get up, you know, I can pour some of the warm water from the stove in there, wash my face, and brush my teeth, and, um, you know, be ready for the day. So, yeah, I think it's really looking cool. And um, I'll try to take the camera and get you a shot in here. But, um, I, you know, leave me some suggestions on what you would do. I've had some so far that said that they would pour a concrete countertop. I had some that they would do epoxy had some, you know, just treat it and, and let it go. Had a lot of different ideas, but leave me some comments. Let me know what you would do if this was yours. Now, I can't do, you know, what everybody's going to suggest, but I will, you know, probably it's going to be general, and I will probably pick one of those, and um, that's what we'll do with this. But these are nice two inches thick, and... Um, this was that dead tree down there in the bottom, but I think that I made good use of it and um, I think that it's going to really look good when it's finished and I am going to leave it natural so it's going to get a clear coat, but I do have to take these out. I do have to sand them down really good before I do that. So, um, but anyway, let's see if we can get you a shot and show you what it looks like.
you know, even with a lot of daylight coming in, uh, moving the camera around, it's, it's difficult to get um, a really good shot of this. Um, but anyway, that's what the kitchen cabinets look like, minus the doors, minus the trim. Once we get all that put together, I think it'll really pop, stand up, and I really think that it's going to set the uh, cabin off um, when it's complete. You know, another thing, I've been doing a lot of work right here at these benches that I have made. And I get lots of different comments about these right here. This is a bench vice, or I call it a bench dog, uh, or it could be called a bench clamp. Um, just a very simple piece of um, tool. Um, this right here actually fastens uh, down whatever it is that you're wanting to hold. And this shank right here, you just really drill you a hole that that will slide down in. And then once that slides down in there, you start hitting the back of this, it causes this piece right here to kind of wedge down in the hole as you're pounding it down more of an angle. And this actually holds it in there. And then when you want to loosen it up, you hit the back side of it and it starts straightening it up and it pulls right back out of the hole. These aren't that expensive. I had seen these before, but I I was doing so much work around uh, the cabin here and uh, you know we have the best people following this channel uh, one of the subscribers that has been following us a long time bless his heart we really have come to like him a lot um, he's seen that I had a need for these and he actually purchased those and sent them to us and I have used these over and over I've used them inside the sawmill. I've got a couple of holes in my bench in there. I've used them in there. Um, of course, these are mobile. I can set them up anywhere. I've got holes drilled in both ends. I've got two of them, <clears throat> so I can actually lay a log up top here, cinch it down on both sides, and pretty much secure it, and then do whatever I need to. So, um, yeah, I get a lot of different comments about this, so I thought I would cover this again uh, for the new people. Um, a bench vise, bench clamp, bench dog, whatever you want to call them. You can find these um, on Amazon and they're not that expensive. And I would suggest, you know, I had w wanted a pair of those for a long time, but, you know, had just got busy working out here and, you know, didn't think about it. And then, you know, it always takes somebody looking at what you're doing outside the box to jog your, um, faculties I guess you would say and and say hey you know that job would be a whole lot easier with one of these you know another thing too is I, I get comments about needing a grapple for the front of the tractor and I honestly wish I had one I really do um, but they're too expensive you know I'm not going to spend the money just to have this effect right here um, when I've got those straps all I've got to do is pull up to what I'm doing and now I've got those forks which make, you know, transporting things <clears throat> a little bit easier, especially since I'm one person around here. But, you know, all of these things that I get comments about, you have to consider, you know, the money too. I'm, I'm retired, I'm living on a fixed income, and it's not that easy to just run out and buy those things, even though they would make things a whole lot easier. But, um, yeah, the, the grapple, they're quite expensive and I don't really know of any use for it other than um, you know for logging uh, or something like maybe these big brush piles here that I've got but I think that I can just scoop those up with my fork and and move them because honestly I'm not going to have that many brush piles um, in the future other than when I'm maybe clearing a piece of property so I really can't justify um, the cost involved in getting a set of grapples for the tractor because I don't even do that much logging. You know, what I do is specifically something that I'm going to build and um, it's, you know, not like I do that building every day, you know, commercially for a living or anything like that. So um, I think the setup that I've got, you know, with everything that I built here, I can pull it out of the woods, get it on the sawmill, saw it up and be done with it and um yeah so 
money does dictate a whole lot of things you know I get comments about and uh, a lot of them are really good suggestions and I wish that I had those things that they're commenting about but like I said money dictates that but, uh, anyway yeah this is a very valuable tool if you do a whole lot of things like what I've been doing up here um, it would really come in handy you know I had another comment too about um, the handrail here I guess it's because I was oiling the handrail on the cabin um, they mentioned that I hadn't done that on the toilet and no I didn't um, I actually put this in I was really busy um, when I was doing this um, I was working on the cabin too at the time this was right after I built the kitchen um, and I basically honestly forgot about it um, but it has weathered so good and it's still just you know um, I think burning it helped it uh, helped it weather you know um, but this is made out of pine and pine a lot of times if it's exposed to the weather it will kind of turn gray and you, you notice that that's what it's done and even the sides of the um, compost toilet are becoming a little bit gray but it's still not too late to go ahead and oil it um, but I'm gonna wait until everything's done on the cabin before I put <coughs> any out here because it is expensive but I still think it looks good I kind of like that uh, color that it has turned now it makes it look old and weathered so um, when I do get a chance to put some on there I think it'll just uh, be that much more appealing but uh, yeah I did I have not oiled this yet and this is what it looks like after what is this now almost uh, two years old it'll be two years old this uh, summer um, but that's what two years worth of basically weather would look like on material that had been debarked and had been cut up on the sawmill and put together you know I've also got some comments about uh, the decking when I actually put this decking on when we built the front porch I lightly burned it and then just you know uh, put it down because I was kind of you know crunched for time my son was going to be flying out he came in to help me uh, get the porch on and the roof and we managed to be able to do that um, but then since we've done that which was October uh, is when we completed it the um, weather you know rain and all of the red clay around here walking back and forth you can kind of tell you know it has uh, left this sort of dusty and dirty looking even though I sweep it off all the time my concern is if I do if I treat it with something uh, it's not going to look like this it's going to turn out a little bit darker and then every time the dog walks up here there's going to be paw prints all over it so I'm trying to decide uh, do I just want to leave it like this and just coat it like with the polyurethane that way it won't show print so much because if I do something darker uh, that would really show up so I don't want to do that so what I may do is just kind of wash it down the best that I can I may lightly burn it one more time and then coat it uh, with some polyurethane that's what I'm really leaning towards doing um, I still think that it's going to um, show paw prints but um, you know I don't know it's out of the weather so it's not like you know the uh, sun and the rain are going to get to it uh, too much so it would last a long 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 time but if I treated it it would make it last even that much longer I just have to figure out you know what I'm going to do because once it's done I can't go back and redo it I could if I wanted to sand it down but I'm not going to do that so kind of have to decide what we're going to do but um, anyway do get some comments uh, you know concerning the porch and um, you know about the decking not being done and what am I going to do with it but everything so far is working out good for me I've built it you know the way I wanted it and um, just like this crooked handrail had one comment came in the lady said well if that place was ever sold and someone bought it that um, they would think well that man couldn't have cut a straight line if he wanted to 
and that's true because everything here is crooked. Um, maybe that's how I got started building crooked because I couldn't cut a straight line. Never thought about that. I do miss the mark every now and then, but what carpenter hasn't, right? Anyway, but yeah, I, I do get comments about the porch and I thought I would cover that and, uh, as well. And you know, most of the comments have been coming in just basically, hey, this is looking good. Uh, they like this or they would have did this color or something like that. Haven't really been too many questions, um, you know, concerning uh, other things that uh, I have talked about, you know, as far as the future plans here go. Uh, well, I did get a... Um, a comment about the base camp. You know, they haven't heard much about the base camp anymore. Well, you haven't heard about it because everything else that's been going on. It's still something that we want to do, but we have to do things um, priority-wise here. So if something comes up that's a much higher priority than something else that we wanted to do, well then we have to switch gears and we have to move in that direction. Just like we've seen the need that um, a storage, you know, for the wood, um, a place to park the tractor, which I had talked about building a barn, um, but we need a place to park the tractor, especially since that tree came down and crushed that uh, little canopy that I had that I parked it under. Um, but a place to do that, and then a place, to, all these tools that we're accumulating, we need a place to put those. So taking that into consideration, that is how we came up with the idea of clearing that off down there and uh, putting up um, another building, you know, for the sawmill and the building for the um, uh, wood shop and then a small place to park the tractor. So, and another thing too, it's going to be planting season here pretty soon, so I'm going to have to get out there and pull um, what dead plants I got in the garden, plus uh, some of the weeds that accumulated, you know, last fall. Get those out, and I'm going to have to get that excavator back up here. Um, he had to come and take the machinery um, and fix uh, somebody's driveway that got in the snowstorm that got um, messed up but that's smoky eating ice if you can hear him anyway um, i do need to get um, him back up here and kind of get that leveled off because i do need that other area down there for planning too um, but in the event that i can't get him up here uh, you know at the right time i may have to move that and do something else this year until he can get back here. He's a very busy guy. He's really good at what he does and he's in high demand. So like I said guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We hope each and every one of you have a great day. You all take care and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.